that the FBI, the Cook County State's Attorney's Office, and the Chicago Police conspired to assassinate Fred Hampton. Noam Chomsky has called Hampton's killing the gravest domestic crime of the Nixon administration. So we say, we always say the Black Panther Party, that they can do the thing they want to do. We might not be back. I might be in jail. I might be anywhere. But when I leave, you can remember I said, with the last words on my lips, that I am a revolutionary. And you're going to have to keep on saying that. You're going to have to say that I am a proletarian. I am the people. A lot of people don't understand the Black Panther Party's uh, relationship with white mother country radicals. A lot of people don't even understand that word that they ever uses a lot. But what we're saying is that there are white people in the mother country that are for the same type of things that we are for stimulating revolution in the, in the mother country. And we said that we would work with anybody and form coalition with anybody that has revolution on their mind. We're not a racist organization because we understand that racism is an excuse used for capitalism. And we know that racism is just is, is a byproduct of capitalism. Everything would be all right if everything was put back in the hands of the people. And we're going to have to put it back in the hands of the people. With no education, the people will take this local foundation and start stealing money because they won't be really educated to why it's the people's thing anyway. You know what I'm saying? With no education, you have neo-colonialism instead of colonialism like you got in... Uh, uh, Africa 9, like you got in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Haiti. So what we're talking about is there has to be uh, an educational program. That's very important. As a matter of fact, we are so important for us that a person has to go through six weeks of our political education before he can consider himself a member of the party, able to even run down ideology for the party. Why? Because if they don't have an education, then they know where. You dig what I'm saying? They know where, because they don't even know why they're doing what they're doing. You, you might get people caught up in an emotionless movement. Uh, you understand me? You might be, get them caught up in because they're poor and they want something. And then if they're not educated, they want more. And before you know it, they'll be capitalists. And before you know it, we'll have Negro imperialists. We don't think you fight fire with fire, miss. We think you fight fire with water, miss. We're going to fight racism, not with racism, but we're going to fight with solidarity. We said we're not going to fight capitalism with black capitalism, but we're going to fight with socialism. We still have said we're not going to fight reactionary pigs and reactionary state attorneys like this and reactionary state attorneys like Hammer Hand with any other reactions on our part. We're going to fight their reaction with all of us people to get together and have an international post-hand revolution. Black people need some peace. White people need some peace. And we are going to have to fight. We're going to have to struggle. We're going to have to struggle relentlessly to bring about some peace because the people that we're acting for peace, they're a bunch of megalomaniac warmongers and they don't even understand what peace means. And we've got to fight them. We've got to struggle with them to make them understand what peace means. That's... Uh... Fred Hampton. The brother was 21, but he had a understanding of revolution. There's a book by uh, Huey P. Newton. It's called To Die for the People. It's about the mistakes they made, what they learned as they went forward. Because you got, you got to understand, these were young college students. Started out with two, then there were five, and then they grew from there. Now, a lot of their stuff was, was socialist programs. But at that time, that's what black folks needed, some type of socialist program to get us on our feet. But you live in a capitalist society, so... You know, we're we not listening to all that socialist bull crap. We could care less. That's why uh, it is how it is now. Everybody was excited about Bernie because a lot of Bernie's programs are considered socialist programs. So the capitalist people of, of America could care less. But back to Fred. You, you saw some of the parts he said when he was talking about educating the people because if you don't educate the people then the program would be a failure because everybody's got to be on the same page moving in the same direction with the same understanding and he wasn't just talking about black people he was just talking about the people when they say power to the people that means power to the black people the white people the Chinese people the red people everybody that's being persecuted they were talking about taking the power from the capitalists and giving it back to the people because after all we elect them and supposedly work for us 
it doesn't seem like that, but that's the way it goes. Now, they've got this Blue Lives Matter law out here now, which they're going to try to make it a, a real criminal act now. I think they're trying to do this against the Black Lives Matter people because the Black Lives Matter people have been getting a little aggressive. So now we'll be able to charge you with a hate crime if you do something toward an officer. And you, don't worry, you ain't going to get no Black Lives Matter bill because that don't matter. Now, a lot of people are trying to compare the Black Lives Matter to the Ku, Ku Klux Klan, which is absolutely ridiculous because we know Ku Klux Klan is a terrorist group. Not was a terrorist group, is a terrorist group. They they still running around having rallies and doing all this stuff nonsense. But they're not listed as a terrorist group, but they're trying to get the Black Lives Matter group listed as a terrorist group. One of, one, of, one of the rules to when, when you're trying to have a revolution, and, and please understand, if you're calling yourself a revolutionist or, or a militant or whatever you're calling yourself, there's a cost to pay with that. It's, it's, it's no, no freebies. If nothing else, they will try to disenfranchise you. You won't have a job. And that's maybe you're working for some black, black people and you, and you may still not have a job because of the political pressure. You, you probably definitely won't get into any elected offices. And then the very people that you're going to to try to help you to, to get what your, your needs are, as you say your needs are, are the politicians. And you have to appease to them like the lobbyists do go and appease for a certain companies and corporations so they can get laws and bills pushed through. But that's a slow process. Y'all remember that I'm just a bill. Yeah, that's that's a slow process. And they know it's a slow process. And that's why you have people like Megan Kelly and people on Fox when something happens, like like this young lady getting shot or Austin Sterling's getting uh, shot. By the way, they've sealed his autopsy report. They don't want to release it. Why, why are you selling an autopsy report? So don't don't expect nothing in that case either, like the Fred Ray case, and don't don't expect nothing in this case. We we losing a, a, a lot of people, so people will be much smarter and 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 understand what what it means to be in a revolution. It, it's not the same as it was back in the in the fifties and sixties with SNCC and the Black Panthers and and Malcolm. All these people had pl platforms and the government came in and tried to squash all of them. And let me show you this uh, Angela Davis piece. Doing no, but tell me. First of all, if you're going to talk about a revolutionary situation, you have to have people who are physically able to wage revolution, who are physically able to organize and physically able to do all that is done. Yeah, but the question is, more, how do you get there? Do you get there by confrontation, violence? Oh, is that the question you were asking? Yeah. See, that's, I mean, that's another thing. When you talk about a revolution, most people think violence. Um, without realizing that the real content of any kind of revolutionary thrust lies in the, in, in the principles and the goals that you're striving for, not in the way you reach them. On the other hand, uh, because of the way this society is organized because of the violence that exists on the surface everywhere. You have to expect that there are going to be such explosions. You have to expect things like that as reactions. If you are a black person and live in, 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 in the black community all your life and walk out on the street every day seeing white policemen surrounding you, I. When I was living in Los Angeles, for instance, long before the situation in L.A. ever occurred, uh, I was constantly stopped. No, the, the, the police didn't know who I, who I was, but I was a black woman. And I had, had a natural, and, and they, I suppose, thought that I might be a, quote, militant. And when you live under a situation like that constantly, um, uh, and, and, then, and then you ask me, you know, whether I approve of violence. I mean, that just doesn't make any sense at all. But when I leave, you can remember I said, 
last words on my lips. I am a revolutionary. And you're gonna have to keep on saying that. You're gonna have to say that I am a proletarian. I am the people. I'm not the big. Well, you seem to be dissatisfied with everything. Just what do you want? I'm not dissatisfied with everything. Um, you, what you are able to see with your analytical mind is that everything that is offered doesn't produce what it's supposed to produce. And I'm just telling you that it doesn't produce what, it produce, what it's supposed to produce. Well, what is your ultimate aim? The only way the problem can be solved. First, the white man and the black man have to be able to sit down at the same table. The white man has to feel free to speak his mind without hurting the feelings of that Negro. And the so-called Negro has to feel free to speak his mind without hurting the feelings of the white man. Then they can bring the issues that are under the rug out on top of the table and take an intelligent approach to get the problem solved. That's the only way. That's, a... that's the only way. But do you think that's going to happen? My teacher told me years ago, Mr. Robinson, why would they give up the power? For what they they have everything. Why why would they give give you anything? Moral monsters. You're you're dealing with the United States of America's government. Big brother to the world. Just like all these countries around the world know what America does in America, but they're gonna call it call them on it. Because we need your help. We need your financing. We need your army. So I ain't going to say nothing. Kind of like in a lot of these neighborhoods, you know, I, I get tired of black folks saying, you know, they, they want to be so liberal and and the, the same thing that their white counterparts say. But well, what about you guys killing each other up in, in your neighborhoods? The answer to that is, what about you guys killing each other? See, they, they want to make it seem like it's something different going on in their neighborhoods. Like they not selling drugs. Like they ain't killing each other. It's only about 40 to uh, to 44 million blacks in America. It's about 164 million whites. So you're, you're almost three, three to four times less. It's more white folks on government assistance than black folks. So when, when people say, what about that? You know, you can't allow these people to deflect the, the conversation. Well, what about this and this? No, what about what we're talking about? What about the oppression of black people in America? What about the group that hasn't gotten any reparations, but was the only group other than the Indians to be oppressed in this country? Where's our free education? That's a demand I like to see. Oh, you want to make up America? 250 years of free education for blacks. Sounds, sounds equal to me. But you're not going to get that. Asking these people to invest in our neighborhoods. They ain't going to do it. We got to invest in ourselves. So if it if it comes down to, oh, well, we're not shopping with any of these other groups anymore until we get ourselves together and we refuse to go to any of these groups. So be it. That's the way you get them out your neighborhoods, because if they can't make any money, then they're not going to be there because they can't cover the, the, the rent and things on the storefronts that they're owning. So they'll have to vacate the storefronts. Then that's when it comes to having a resource center in neighborhoods that can train people how to run businesses. Everybody should look up uh, Dr. Boyce Watkins boot camp, wealth boot camp. He does that and he does an intelligent boss move show with Damon Dash. And they teach you how to start a business, run a, a business. They teach your kids how to how to have a different mindset. See, we got to have a different mindset in order to really revolutionize. We got to be able to employ our own people. So if that brother does mess up and he goes away to jail and he comes out, now we can embrace him back into the community like they do with their people. 
they say, we understand that you messed up, Josh. That's in the past now. We're, we're ready to accept you back into the community. We've got some opportunities for you. If you're willing to work, we're here for you. It's going to be okay. Black people get out. Nigga, you on your own. Because we have no resources. All, all our resources are going to survive. And, and we stay in this constant survival mode. You'll know the difference between surviving and living once you get to a place in life and you feel the difference. Surviving is real stressful. It's ongoing. It's gnawing at you. Living is a little more relaxed. We can't be angry Negroes forever. We got to translate this anger into something positive, into something creative, into something motivating, into building something, rebuilding communities, taking back communities. And you may not have to do that with every store in the community. Maybe there's certain stores that you like, but you know the stores that talk crazy to you, talk crazy to your kids, all that. You, you got to get away from that. There are certain neighborhoods that don't allow any of that. The only group I know that can go to every neighborhood is a Chinese restaurant. They're welcome everywhere and they're successful everywhere. So that's a, a winning system. But you're not opening a Popeyes everywhere or a, a, a gyro shop everywhere. That just doesn't exist. Our, our diets are, are bad and, and, and that's killing us too. So we got, we got so many things going on that we need to correct. And we, and we got to start somewhere, but we got to get control of the anger. Like I said, I'm an angry black man. Most of the time throughout the day, I'm probably angry. But I don't act on that anger. And I don't go out and behave in such a manner where killing cops and things like that becomes acceptable in my life. Those people that got to that point, they just didn't have an off switch. A lot of these guys were military guys. And when you go to the military, I, I think personally... It does something to your mind. I've seen a whole lot of brothers that just weren't the same after they went to the army. So we got got to be careful. You have to control your anger. And there's no need being anger in situations that don't call for anger. Like the young lady. Now there's two kids without a mother the young boy was shot too so now he's, he's got to be traumatized for the rest of his life of watching his mother gun down of being shot himself you don't think this kid's going to grow up with a different mindset if you don't then you're fooling yourself All this was weighing on my mind, so I just wanted to get it off my chest. Congratulations to the Black Lives Matters people. They got a downloadable file also. If you, if you want to download the demands and, and look at the website. Um, I'm, I'm going to look at further over. I, I looked at a few things. But, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a starting point. And, and they're trying to do something. And it's the young generation that's pushing and looking for for that direction. Well, just like back then, SNCC and, and all these people, these were the young kids too. You know, a lot of them didn't have jobs, so you couldn't j threaten their jobs. And that that's what has become a problem with a lot of us. We got jobs and things now. And so the, the economics controls you and, and makes you keep your mouth shut and doesn't allow you to be who you need to be. And that, that includes me. I, I work on the job also. And so, you, you know, they'll throw that political correctness crap up on you in a second and say, this isn't the, the, the way we want our image to be. 
but they'll do all types of dirty, crazy stuff and want you to swallow it. They won't swallow, but they want you to swallow. So we, we just got to work harder, be smarter. Let's stop losing quality young folks. And let's grow together. Love, peace, so we out of here. At the very same time that America refused to give the Negro any land, through an act of Congress, our government was giving away millions of acres of land in the West and the Midwest, which meant that it was willing to undergird its white peasants from Europe with an economic floor. But not only did they give the land, they built land-grant colleges with government money to teach them how to farm. Not only that, they provided county agents to further their expertise in farming. Not only that, they provided low interest rates in order that they could mechanize their farms. Not only that, Today, many of these people are receiving millions of dollars in federal subsidies not to farm, and they are the very people telling the black man that he ought to lift himself by his own bootstraps.